Hi. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, we did a video showing you how to run a report in NVivo. Um, and we did promise in that video that we would do a follow-up, um, showing you how to custom report or even create one from scratch. And we're going to do that now. And we've had a particular request in since uh, via the channel um, for someone to do exactly that. So, we're going to make a report. And the particular client who requested this was, was uh, saying, you know, he wanted just a simple report that looked at the file and whatever codes went against an individual. The kind of thing you'd see in IPA, you know, in case and cross case analysis, you want to look at each individual case separately. Could be the reason. And there's other reasons why you might want to do that. So the first thing to say is you can create reports. You can customize existing ones and you can also um, export and import reports. So if I spend a bit of time customizing a report that I need, then I can just take that with me to my next project and it will work perfectly in the next project as well. Um, so you can import and export. So I have an example of one here that we made. Um, it's, it's, it's file by code. It, it's the file that is one that the client asked for. And it's going to be a simple one for the sake of the video. I think this is going to be a bit longer than usual. We to keep these a little bit shorter where possible, but uh, it's a bit more technical. This one. So file by coding report, and I want, I'm going to have the total number of references for each file and the report. I just run it first to show you um, what it's going to look like when we're finished. So this is a. It's going to. This is known as a filter. I'll explain a little bit more in a moment what that is and what its purpose is but it, it whoops it, i'm telling you just to look at our brent charles's interview just to make this run quickly but i could make it run on everything and again i'm just picking three three major codes i'm not going to run it on everything but i could and i get my report so this is a, a custom report now i'm not going to go into explaining how these work because the previous video and i'll put a link into the video for this does explain all the parameters and uh, how to navigate reports and all that so we won't go back over that again but you can see what the report looks like it's got the, the, the interview the, whatever codes i've chosen to list or everything even if there's nothing coded to it and the number of references i put in one numeric field in there just to show you in case you want to include the likes of a numeric field the particular request isn't looking for that but i just thought if we're going to show you how to make reports that's something you know you might want to do and then we have a simple subtotal for each file and then a grand total at the end so it's quite simple but effective and we can now export that into word or pdf or print it or do all the things you want to do it and repeatedly run it across different interviews or codes or both so that's what we're going to make now i'm going to go down here uh, to the so it's, it's under reports formatted reports and then over here i'm going to right click and i'm going to make a new format report using the wizard uh, we'll show you the designer in a minute and um, you can edit and change and custom the report in the designer even a standard one but i'm going to just use the wizard because it's easier to follow if you're not used to this it'd be an easier way to make your report and it's asked me what kind of report i want to do this is going to be about files so i'm going to make a file report from the view of a file and i'm going to say next to that now I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to put in all I want to see in my report is the name of the file. So I'm going to, these are all available fields here on the left. There's a lot of them. So we can do quite a bit with these uh, when you get used to editing and creating these reports. So I want the file and I want the name of the code that it's coding or any codes that it's coding. And I want, I'm going to put one numeric field in there. I just want the number of coding references. So that's the report we showed you a minute ago. So I'm going to say next to my wizard now. Now this is a really important piece because this is where it's asking you, do you want to apply filters to the report? I mentioned them a moment ago. So a filter means if I don't put in a filter, when I run that report, it's going to run it across all files and all codes. I might want that. I might want my cases, for example. So I'm going to add some filters here that's going to tell the report to prompt me for where it wants to look and what it wants to include. So I'm going to add a couple of filters here. The first one is I don't necessarily want to run it on every file. I may want to just run it on one file. So I'm going to ask it to prompt me for the name of the file. And the, the operator will be in. So 
and then prompt for the parameter. The parameter being, what files do you want? I'm gonna add a second one because I might want it to report on all codes. Might be in a cycle of coding, phase one, phase two, phase three, for example. So I'm gonna tell it again to just give me the, to give me a choice on what codes I want to include. So I'm going to do an in for that as well. So there's my prompt. It's gonna prompt me now when I go to run the report to tell it what files and what codes to include. Now I wanted to group. I wanted to group on the file name. So I see the file, all the codes, and then the file and all the codes. And I'm gonna see all the codes, and then the file repeated in several different codes. So it's important to get your sort order correct, your grouping. And I'll just tell it, I don't have to do this, but I'll tell it, look, when you're listing the codes, list them in alphabetical order ascending. But I don't have to do that if I don't want to. Now, three choices, and I can change my mind after I make the report, and I can change the outline, but um, I can have a stepped, um, like this. You see the, the outline of it here on the left, uh, a block, or an online, uh, an outline. I'm gonna do stepped. I, a portrait will do fine for us today. I could make it landscape if I had a lot of fields, that, you know, going across the top here. I could get it to print landscape instead. Um, just to fit things neater on the page and give me a bit more room, but I'm gonna do it at portrait. Now I just have to pick my style. There's a, a range of, not that many, but there's a range of styles in there. I'll pick the color purple. And I'll give this thing a name. I'll call it coding. And so actually I'll call it file by codes report just naming it different to the one we made uh, as the example. And I'm gonna open this in the designer to show you what the designer looks like. I could just say okay, and it'll just save the, the report and then I can run it, right click run. But I just wanna open the designer just to show you what that looks like and that I might want to make changes. And if I have the designer open, I can keep running the report and see what the changes I made actually look like. So there's my report in design view. So I'll run it first just to see am I happy with it. Um, I just run the run the format of the report and it's gonna there's my prompts. So I'm gonna tell it, okay, I'm just gonna run this on a couple of files. I'm not gonna run it on everything, but I could. I could select the whole folder if I want. Um, but I'm gonna select uh, I'll just take Barbara and I'll take Charles just to have a couple of examples in there of files. And I'll do the same with the name with the, with the code. I'll tell it what codes I want to see. And again, I'm not gonna do everything. I'll just take two or three major codes. So I'll take community change, the economy, infrastructure. By the way, we're running this on the newest version of Vivo, version 14. But if you're on an older version, this is exactly the same. They haven't done anything with the report writer in the newer versions. Um, unfortunately, there isn't one of these on the Mac, as, at least as of yet. But for Windows, uh, it's exactly the same, regardless of the version. So I'll say okay to that. There's my codes in now and I say okay and it'll now run my report. And I can see what it looks like. So I'm happy enough. It shows me, there's Barbara, there's the codes I've selected, but it could have been all the codes. And it shows me for each one, the number of references that Barbara has against her, her interview. So the only change between that and the other one, and I'm just gonna put this in. You don't have to do this. This is just an addition that some people might wanna do, so I'm gonna include it in the video. So I might want to put totals or subtotals in here uh, at the end of each file. So I'm gonna do that now, but I have my, my designer open, so I can do that easily enough. So it's the number of references I'm interested in. So I'm going to click on the function option up here. I'm gonna tell it to sum, to give me the sum of those numbers. And it, I, I don't want it at the footer, that would be a grand total. I want it in the group footer. So for each file, it'll now tell me for Barbara, how many she has. And I'll do the same for, um, click on the field I want to add the function to. I'm going to do the same for a grand total at the end. So I'll stick that in at the bottom. Move that just down a small bit because they take a little bit of room. I'll just move this one down a small bit as well. It's not overlapping on the line in the report. Now I'm not gonna put in the labels yet, you know, total, grand total, etc. until I just run this and see am I happy with it. So I run my formatted report. 
Now it's going to remember my filter from the last time and I could change it and add all the files or codes if I want, but I'm not going to. And I get my report. Sometimes you have to make some modifications. You can see a bit close to the line there. I might move them down a little bit. And you can see the grand total down here as well. So I'll make my final little adjustments just to tidy that up a little bit. I'll just move this down the shade and move this down the shade. I'm going to put a label in there so I can see what those numbers represent when I run the report or my reader can. So I'm going to click into the group footer area and I'm going to go here to the designer box and I'll click on text in the ribbon and I'll give this a title. So subtotal. Uh, references. Maybe I'll put the references first. Subtotals. So I'll put that in there. I have this in dynamic save, so it just takes a second when you make a change. It runs a little bit slower if you're on dynamic save, but it means if you crash, you're not going to lose anything. Um, so I'm going to widen this column just to make this on a single line. And I'll stick it there somewhere in the middle of nearby. Again, I might have to fiddle with this a little bit just to get it to look the way I want it to look uh, or to align the way I want it to align. Now I'm going to put another one for the, sub, the grand total, so I'll copy that. And I'll paste it in here into the report footer. And I'll edit it. Just double click into it, bring up the dialog box. And I'll call this grand total. words to that effect and again it just jumped around a bit on me there so I'm gonna this is a, an, a, an add-on app that Vivo uses called Crystal Reports and it isn't the most user-friendly app you've ever worked with that's probably why you're looking at this video and um, but it does work when you get used to it it's not too bad at all and um, it's just a little bit clunky but then right generating and customizing reports from scratch you know it is a more technical aspect to it so there's my what I hope will be my final report. So I'm going to run that now. I'll accept the same parameters. I won't um, change the filter, but I could. And I'll see what that looks like. There it is. I'll have to move that label down a small bit. Um, but you can see the subtotal is fine. It's opposite the total. I might move those numbers a little bit to the left. And I might move that label down a bit, but you get the idea. I can tweak it and customize it to get it looking exactly the way I want. I could also add in, I can professionalize my outputs. I could put in, you know, the name of the project, the institutional logo, and um, they're all in there. And, the, you know, I can put in images, I can put in um, text and make this look pretty. You know, I can change the color scheme if I want. But essentially, um, they're the mechanical steps you would need to be able to custom report either an existing one you know or um because you see i can custom an existing one or i can build one from scratch the way we did here there's all the fields on the left so i could just drag a field in here and add another field if i wanted to from any of those areas so that's it that's um how to build uh, a custom report and um, so i hope that's helpful if you uh, think that is please like and subscribe and if you have any questions post them in the chat down below so I hope you enjoyed and uh, benefit somewhat from this video.